Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on another one of my videos. As you can see by the description, I have spent a lot of time scouring Amazon trying to find the perfect, the cheapest remote control trolling motor that I can mount on my 2005 Odyssey Tritune, 25 foot. So I'm basically gonna take you through from the unboxing of this Haswing Cayman to mounting on the boat and see how she performs. Please stick around. Okay, so here she is. I did buy this a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I did open it, but I haven't really pulled anything out to see what it all looks like and how it all goes together. So I thought I'd save that for camera, and uh, we'll kind of do that now. This is how she looks in the box. And this is a, a remote control, hand control, but it also, I went ahead and purchased the, oh, that's the mounting plate. Uh, somewhere in here should be foot control as well. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. So I bought the foot control as well, and that one actually just plugs into the unit, so it's not wireless but the the handheld remote is wireless so we'll see how that all works together i wanted to be able to control it from the helm uh, with the remote but also kind of come up on the bow if i wanted to and use the foot control uh, so uh, let's see which way around there we go so looks like uh faster slower on and off left and right I'm not sure what, uh, oh, full speed. So I guess you just tap that once and you go full power. And I'm not sure what these two buttons are for yet, but interesting. It comes with a lanyard. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Pull this foot control out. It looks decent for all intents and purposes. It was cheap, but it seems like it's well constructed. Uh, faster, slower, on and off, left, right. And again, not sure what these little buttons down here. This is just, I think you set your heel on it and uh, gives you a way to pivot your foot. So that should be nice. Propeller, a three blade prop. And again, uh, this, is the mounting bracket, which I wanted because it is on uh, Tritune. I wanted to be able to take it off and on and when we're fishing, be able to use it, but also use it as a normal pleasure craft and not have to take up so much space. So, all right, we'll get this out of here and see what she looks like all out of the box. Okay, I've run into maybe the first issue. This right here is where I wanted to mount it off to the side. Uh, and just be out of the way, but it's going to be interfered by this cleat. Uh, not only the quick release can't release, but also just now that I'm looking at this in the box, the width, total width of the body of the trolling motor mount itself here, or the, or the mounted surface is going to be too wide for this cleat to stay where it is. So, if this is where I want it, I'm gonna have to move the cleat. Mm. The other option, I don't have one of those fancy doors that makes room for the trolling motor, but I also could do something like this off the front, uh, since, again, it will be stowed in the boat when not in use anyways. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that. I think I figured out what I want to do. I'm still going to mount it off the side here and move this cleat. Uh, reason being is I don't want to have to get a new door, one of the ones with the cutouts in the bottom, and I also don't want to run full time with the door open when the trolling motor is mounted. So I think it's best 
that I go ahead and remove this cleat, mount the trolling motor where I originally wanted it. Once the motor is actually mounted, then I'll figure out where I can put the cleat. So the installation of this should be pretty easy and fairly straightforward. I just have to get the positioning correct. So essentially this works by this center puck here will be permanently mounted on the boat. Uh, and then this kind of horseshoe shaped uh, portion will stay with the trolling motor. It'll be mounted right on the motor and they basically fit together. So when the trolling motor's off, that's all you're gonna see. And when you put it back on, it'll hang off the side and this keeps it in place. And it's got a little spot right here where you can put a, a lock through uh, or something just securing the whole piece of hardware together. So first thing I'll need to do is kind of get a location where, to, where on the boat should this be exactly make sure that there's enough clearance between uh, the boat and the mount where this can spin, obviously. About good there. There's that U-shaped little channel uh, cut in here, and that's obviously where the shaft comes down. There's plenty of room there. Okay, I figured it out. When you pull the motor back, the head here cradles in these little uh, cradles, and, uh, and then it, it locks into position and holds it there. So uh, that gives me, I think, a good enough clearance where it's going to sit up on the bow without hitting anything, and then be able to deploy next to the tune without hitting anything. So I think that is right where I want it. So the instructions don't say, but I'm going to use a one quarter inch bit. It's definitely larger than the bolt, but won't let the head uh, fall through. And the package also did not come with any uh, washers. So I'm going to try to find some washers uh, for the underneath side so that the bolts don't pull through eventually. So I'm going to find those. Looks like for these mounting holes, uh, they give you four bolts. And there are two, four, six, eight holes. So I'm guessing you just kind of choose whichever ones are most convenient for you, which is nice because we do have a pontoon underneath to worry about. Although I don't think, looking at it, we would really hit uh, anything. I'll have to make sure that I don't hit that, but I don't think so. I think we're good to pretty much go ahead and run those through. So I will probably go with uh, the second to most forward holes and the furthest rear holes. Uh, I think will give me, I'll stay away from that edge and I think that'll be fine. One, two, three, and four.
like maybe a 10 mil possibly. Uh, and again, I'll have washers later. We have our top plate installed, and the next uh, task is going to be getting this bottom plate here mounted to the underneath side of the haswing. So that's next. So we are a couple days later here, and uh, I have kind of finished up the installation of the mounting bracket, and I'll show you I was able to cut a little bit more of the edge of that uh, square tubing out so that it gave me a little bit more room for my nuts to screw on. I still am going to get some washers, haven't done that yet, but uh, she is on there and ready to go. Um, the next stage here is to start assembling the actual um, trolling motor and uh, some of the pieces that come with are a handle which will mount to the top of the unit so makes for easy removal off of the mounting bracket and then also a skeg that goes on the bottom of the unit itself so we'll go ahead and those are just a few screws a piece and we'll go ahead and get that done Next, we have to mount the portion of the mounting bracket that stays with the motor on the bottom side of the motor. And to do that, there are, looks like these little windows on each side, and there are, it's hard to see there, but there are holes for the bolts to go in. Three on both sides. These are not the bolts to use. These are the bolts you would use if you're not using the quick release mounting plate. These are the bolts you would use if they're going straight through the deck. See how long they are. These go way too deep. The kit came with shorter bolts, so that is what we're using. Success. Okay, next is putting on the propeller, and the instructions are not great, and I've never done this before. Um, but first is the pin. Pin goes through the little hole, and then the propeller goes on. And the pin kind of locks the propeller to the shaft here. And it describes in the instructions a hard rubber washer, which this did not come with. So I'm either supposed to omit it, or it seems like the hard rubber washers that were for the mounting bolts fit, so that might be what I use. 
I'm gonna try that first. So hard rubber washer. And then this sacrificial anode. I'm gonna put it face in. Regular washer and then a nut. Okay, so I've just decided I'm not going to use that hardware for washer because that would not give enough room for the locking nut to grab. So I'm going to pull that back out. sacrificial anode in now. In the washer. And the nut. You say this is your prop wrench. go too tight it's all plastic so and then it looks like they give you an extra pin an extra washer and an extra nut and an extra sacrificial anode okay This little bolt here is sitting proud and it's hindering that from moving in and out smoothly. So I'm going to take a drill bit and just kind of carve out the bottom side of this plastic handle just to give it clearance room. May not be something you have to deal with, but all right. So she's on. Let's uh, go ahead and just do a little soft deployment here. now before it was the tedium of the install now I'm excited slam it down every time. Maybe I'll loop a rope or something around it that I can kind of ease or guide it down. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, again, this is unique to my application, but that screw there was impeding this handle from going in smoothly so I just took a drill bit and hollowed it out there and while it is not pretty it is functional so it's a lot easier to get that locked and unlocked now and what holds this on is really anything you can put through that hole and make stay so 
a little padlock, uh, some sort of cotter pin, uh, whatever you can think of. So that, I think it inappropriate to test out the cheapest remote trolling motor without the cheapest battery I could find. Well, second cheapest. I ended up going with the slightly larger deep cycle 122 amp hour battery versus I think the smaller one was something like 80 amp hours. So it's a slightly bigger battery. Uh, have not done anything yet other than hook it up. The cord for the foot control looks like that. Goes together and I just have it up here temporarily so I can demo it. And I also have the remote. They say to pair it, you hit the reset button. Press and hold the reset button. And then press and hold this button at the same time. And you'll hear three beeps and you'll know it's paired. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Also note, I really like this because it has a battery indicator. There actually was a cheaper unit from Walmart, and I can't remember exactly what it's called. It was an Australian brand, but it did not have a battery indicator on it, and it wasn't remote anyway, so I did want the handheld remote. But I like the fact that it has a battery indicator so you know when you're due for a recharge. All right, trial number one. I'm going to push the center button. I push the rabbit once, so that looks like the slowest mode. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, and on. There's also this collar has a cam that it needs to ride in in order for the turning mechanism to catch. So up here is wrong. It locks into this cam. Go ahead and turn. no reverse on this unit so you basically have to spin it all the way around which is fine there's instant response there's no lag or anything it's, as soon as I touch the button it goes and here's the foot control Looks like that's the speed indicator. So if I push the turtle, it reduces the speed that'll be engaged. Let's see how that goes. Well, thanks for watching that video. I will get it out on the water soon and I'll do another video on demonstrating how it's going to perform. I'm curious myself as to how it's going to push this big boat around in the water. So uh, I do have one more project I need to complete before uh, I actually get the boat in the water. And uh, I'm sorry, I really can't say anything about what that project might be. It's kind of a secret right now. So, you know, just subscribe to the channel and maybe, uh, maybe you might see something on it. Um, stick around. All right, thanks. Bye.